Alrighty, welcome. It is post Tour Divide. I'm now in Scotland. I think it's about 10 days ago I finished or so. Um, the bike has finally arrived. It's about five days off the pace behind me in the flights. And I thought I'd just get it out of the box, build it up as is, clearly uncleaned, and um, tell you guys what worked and what didn't work. For the full bike check, check it out. I went over everything in detail before I started. Um, but this should be hopefully briefer. I'm just going to explain what worked and what didn't work. Obviously, I came third, so most of it worked pretty well. I'm pretty happy with the decisions I made and the stuff that I brought along. So we'll start with the bike. Um, the Santa Cruz Highball went really well. Light frame. Um, Maybe one negative is not a lot of um, clearance down there by the rear wheel. So the mud built up there and then pushed the chain off. Um, but 99% of people were having trouble with this. Um, I just was comparing a few different frames. And, but obviously this is an XC race frame. It's not made for this sort of stuff. But uh, other than that, it did an amazing job. No dramas at all. Uh, and then starting at the front, wheels. DT Swiss front and rear, didn't touch a spoke, no dramas. Tires, Maxxis Aspen 2.25s, incredible. I think about two thirds of the way through, I pumped them up to 30 psi. They might have dropped five or six psi, so incredible. As you can see, the back one was getting down on tread at the end, um, but that was good for the fast roads of New Mexico. So perfect there. Um, Sun Dynamo, K light lighting. Incredible, just did exactly what it said it was going to do. This is my first experience with the Dynamo, um, and it was charging my power banks throughout the daytime, like efficiently as well, better than what I thought it was going to do. And the light was amazing and things like that. So, very good investment there. Um, what else have we got? Aero bars were great. Um, brakes, I changed the brake pads once in Colorado. And that was resin too, so um, they did really well. Uh, moving back, the drivetrain, 36 tooth on the front. I think that was the correct decision with the 52 tooth on the rear. Um, so the, the ratio went really well. Um, this was like a game changing decision to put these T8000 Shimano pedals on. Um, basically after one and a half days, my feet were having issues. As usual so I just went full flat pedals for 99% of the race and um, it worked out really well I just put my foot in like a mid foot position and just stomped away for 4,000 K's so that was a very wise decision before the start um, all the bottle holders and things went amazingly well uh, lost one bottle one Rhino power bottle on the other side um, on the last day and I just threw this big 950 mil one out because uh, it broke and I nursed it to the end. I actually used a bit of my insulation tape um, which I put around my pump to keep it alive and then I didn't bother flying to the UK with it. So that's the bike sorted. Um, now we're on to the bags and the equipment. The bags were great. Um, really really good. Really liked how easy it was to just clip them out and then just pull them straight out. So as soon as I got to a bivvy spot at night, I just within seconds have both the front and the rear bag off the bike and I'd have that pop them open and then get my kit out. So in terms of kit, this is basically, I did a bit of rearranging as you do on the course. Uh, this is how it ended. Uh, waterproof gloves, probably used them three times because they're pretty hectic. Um, but they did the job really well when I needed them. I'll be bringing them next time. Um, even though I didn't use them too many times, it could have rained even worse and um, they were really useful. This was fantastic as usual. This has done quite a few ultras now. Hagloff, synthetic, didgeridoo, and it was really warm, really good. And some of the mornings were so cold, I was pedaling with this for two or three hours, you know, from 3 a.m. to 6 or something like that. And it was great. Apparently it smells now. Um, Can't confirm. 
The last thing in the front bag is my AliExpress pants, down pants. They were great, they were warm, and they were cheap. No complaints. That was instead of a sleeping bag. Instead of a sleeping bag, got the down pants and the down booties once again. Game changer. Stoked with the decision. Decision was good. Now we got the rear saddle bag. What have I got? This is where I kept my second layer. So this was the POC um, Merino blend. And I honestly probably wore this 70% of the time. It's great. Didn't get too hot when it was really, really hot, but it was warm at night time. So pretty awesome option. Uh, and then my waterproof pop pants. They're quite heavy, but I didn't regret it. I use this quite a lot. Um, they're tapered, so they didn't get in the way. Big zip, so I can just go over my shoes. And I actually didn't just only wear these when it was raining. Sometimes it was really cold. And I just put these on, it kept the wind off and kept me warm. So I was worried about the weight of these, but they were worth it, they were mint. Um, Alp kit cloud base mattress did its job. I think it's losing air towards the end, but did a good job. And my bivy. Don't know what that is, but it's good. It's waterproof and it was fine. I'd use the same one again. And the same system. No sleeping bag and a bivy. Seemed absolutely fine. I slept well for the four or five hour stints that I needed to. But yeah, I did the Great Southern Brevet without the mattress and the cold the cold ground just meant I couldn't sleep at all so the mattress is quite heavy and it's a full body one but I decided it was worth it and it was because um, no matter how cold the ground was like even sleeping in the pit toilets which are just concrete floor um, I just got a really good four or five hours sleep so I think it would take a pretty special short race for me to not bring a mattress but we'll see um, so on to the other smaller bags, uh, feed bag at the front here, I ended up, New Mexico got me really good with the sun, so I just bought a mega SPF 20 um, sunblock, and I still peeled like a lobster. Uh, jungle juice, this is insect spray, they got me pretty good in Colorado, so I invested, and then didn't really need it anymore. Anyway, that'll be handy in Scotland. This top tube bag, obviously restrap again. These were very useful. This is where I had my lip balm and um, chain loop, just ready to go at all the stops. Uh, inside the top tube bag, I kept food, snacks at the front, and just a pile of stuff at the back. These are more notes um, that put together with Simon. Once again, huge thanks for your help for the race. These are sort of pace notes, elevations, different towns, and all, things like that. Important information, where the water is, where the resupply is. And this is even more in depth um, when you get to those resupplies or those townships. The different options, the hours they're open and everything like that. So that's a huge part of um, just putting my mind at ease while I was on the course. So. Did you use that a lot? Yeah, but I mainly used um, we had a broad, well, I had a broad one on my uh, aero bars, which I just rotated, which was basically just distance to the next resupply and elevations and if there was water in between. So that's the main thing I wanted. Um, it was sort of once every two days, I might look a bit closer at those sheets. Um, so obviously, yep, some food and all sorts going on in this top tube bag. I ended up just buying a big bottle of lube because it was actually really wet, this divide, and um, I just found I was just lubing my chain like maybe five or six times a day just to shut it up. So I ended up uh, in Salida most of the way through the route just buying a big lube. Uh, also at that same bike shop, I uh, bought a secondary Axis charger. Mine started to play out. One of my batteries stopped working, so I was very nervous. You run out of gears then your single speed and I can't handle that. So I ended up investing in a spare charger and another spare battery. Um, 
but made it through fine and I didn't actually need the spare charger but better to be safe and this is the the blip box so that was hooked up to my gears obviously at the front this is amazing I did 15 days and very minimal nerve damage which is new for me so just being able to lightly press on the buttons on my grips and on my euro bars was a game changer um, for some reason the last five days these buttons on my grips were sort of missing gears and playing up a bit whereas these are perfect so um, maybe I need to calibrate this or something like that but I'd use it again I'd use GX again uh, axis again it was just very nice and smooth as mentioned the K light and Sun 28 combo was amazing and this just hung out in here and I had this cable which charged my both of my 10,000 power banks directly too easy and here was basically just food oh this was in one of my this is in my rear pack I didn't open this this has got uh, thankfully I didn't open this this has got two ultralight tubes and also a tire stitching kit and tire boots so this just hung out at the bottom of my rear bag and wasn't touched um, oh this is what I was discussing earlier this was what went on my handlebars uh, and it has some really good information and in red it's information that I can't be missing so this is great might even keep that <laughs> um, and this was just filled with cliff bars basically emergency food rhino powered gels I had about 30 to start with and they sort of lasted the whole ride when I got to the end of a you know a resupply stretch and I didn't have much they were great or even if I was just low on energy and I had a big climb in front of me I just had one of those rhino power gels um, my toolbox opened it twice basically just got two sets of brake pads out no drama so that is what you want this here had my salt tabs they were great uh, multi-tool this was fantastic because it's a multi-tool uh, and also <laughs> everyone loves a multi-tool and also this is where I had a couple of caffeine pills uh, because I did some long stretches the last two nights and aqua tabs I used these only a couple of times really just from I used them on the Bannock Road stretch with it I don't know where that is and then in New Mexico a few times and I was getting very desperate um, yeah I needed a lot of water I was filling up with six and a half liters but then when I'd go through a creek that looked very marginal I'd fill up whatever I had empty and put a bunch of these in them just because I was scared that I'd run out and I'd rather take a risk with some dodgy water than um, dehydrate um, but I made it through fine so now moving on to what I was wearing and stuff that's why I'm wearing this this gilet was on all the time basically apart from when it was really like 40 degrees in New Mexico has zip pockets and I just ended up keeping handy things warm pot gloves they were great they were on all night and really nice I don't know what they're called maybe road thermal gloves and the other side I had my knee warmers pot once again and they were on every night in cold days and also in the back pocket I had although I didn't use too much I had my um, POC illicit glasses which have a clear lens um, so the first sort of three nights I had the energy to swap glasses and put my clear glass lens on after that I didn't care and I just put my um, pop devour glasses on the top of my helmet and just ran no glasses at night time um, so speaking of which so the helmet and the glasses went really well helmet was uh, very comfortable um, the velcro additions that I've done on the glasses still holding up worked really well they never wobbled off or anything they were really on there um, and then also velcro on phoenix head torch was great to have it have at night and i had a spare battery um and i, I only actually used this because the k was really well re really good 
I only needed this setting up cams and a few times I'd um, turn it on when I'd hear some interesting noises in the woods and try and see what it was. Other than that, I wouldn't need it. Speaking of which, here are my, yeah, in this pocket, I had uh, my passport and my spare batteries. So three, uh, two spare GoPro batteries and that managed to, I didn't even need to charge my GoPro. So potentially I haven't got enough content. We will see at some point. And uh, a couple of access batteries and things. So I just had those pretty handy in the side pocket. Um, and these restrap spare straps. And I did actually use one of these. I've used it. I popped off a strap um, that puts the um, top tube bag around the stem and secures it. So that snapped on day one, and but thankfully I had the spare and um, secured it. And then on my back, well this is on my person, I was wearing this when it was hot. That's Whoa. obviously pretty grim. Is that, that dirt on there? Sweat? Not sure. Whoa. Just brownness. Brownness, that's washed as well. Is it? Yeah. Whoa. Uh, oh, this, this is my underlayer. This didn't leave me. This is great. Do you have it on the whole time? I had it on pretty much the whole time, but sometimes I dip it in a river and give it a squeeze. Really good. Pock once again. And this, I've been looking forward to telling people about this. This is my piece of kit of the trip. This is my, uh, oh, it's ripped. This is my Pock balaclava. And it basically just was amazing because whenever it was marginally cold, I had it around here. And that was most of the time, to be honest. And then that goes over your, over your nose the whole time, but it's got breathable vents so you, you don't fog up all your glasses and it doesn't get moist and things. And then when it gets cold, I had this wee hood. And this could go over and then uh, put my helmet on as well. And the amount of time that I was biking with this on, helmet on, and my glasses, was uh yeah quite a lot of time like this <laughs> and i was wrapped up from the elements but i was absolutely loving my decisions so so you can find this in their snow catalog this isn't actually i had to go digging for this and i'm um, stoked about it uh oh more in the bag more in the bag um so i was initially in day one i was using these tassels on my pock jacket to put onto my uh, aero bars. Then I just found it a lot quicker and easier to just stuff it into one of these, um, into one this, this pocket here. That's twisted. <laughs> so I just took the jacket, because I was taking the jacket on and off, maybe, I don't know, eight to 10 times a day, it felt like. Um, I wouldn't roll it into its pocket like this. I'd just ram it straight in, and it would be in and out and in and out. And it's a size large, so I'd, I'd put it over my Ultra Vest as well. I mean, that keeps everything. Like, there's electronics and things in my bag, so it kept it all dry. It was an amazing jacket, and I'd definitely use the same one again. Uh, what else have we got in here? For the big resupplies in New Mexico, particularly, I just filled up this restrap musette. Um, and that was really good because I could just go into the supermarkets or the, the service stations, I mean, and fill it up. Um, I didn't really have a great spot to put it, to be honest. Um, so I just sort of draped it <laughs> um, and tried to keep it out of the tire, um, which was a bit wild on the descent. So potentially if I was going to do it again, um, the Euro race bags were amazing. They kept everything very secure and so I could really rally on the downhills but I'd probably look for a little bit more volume capacity than what I had. Maybe a little bit bigger on the saddlebag or something like that. So I wouldn't need to carry as much in the big resupply zones um, with the musette. That would be the only change I'd make. Uh, inside, I ended up just putting both my electronics and my hygiene kit in my bag so that when I went into any restaurant or service station and toilet I, I could charge some stuff um, so that was a change from the plan and it's pretty lightweight so why not just a pile of cables no dramas there and your cranberry nut medley yeah uh, hygiene kit 
think I nailed it. Um, basically, the, as recommended, I just use this Avene Psychalphate at night time. No chamois cream the whole time. Obviously, I didn't come out perfect, but uh, I made it to the end <laughs> without any use of chamois cream and stuff. And I had this Clarisel extra strength in case I did get saddle sores. Um, I think I used this once or twice. So the hygiene method went well, thankfully. And this is my three liter Evoc bladder, which I filled up maybe four times. And also a good hack was just getting a big feed at McDonald's and then filling this up at the fountain. Um, and I filled up a lot of stuff at the fountain with Powerade, which was awesome. Uh, and that is empty. So in summary, it went really well. I'd say that I, would, I wouldn't change the sleep system. The stuff that I bought, basically head to toe POC equipment really impressed me. Uh, the bike was all pretty awesome, even the gear ratio, everything, I was really happy with my decisions. Um, I would say a little bit more capacity as I mentioned before. Um, the fork got really scratched in the peanut butter mud, which is annoying. Um, but I did actually really like having suspension, so once again I'd use suspension, I'd use the dynamo. Good decisions all around. One very poor amateur thing that I did was I didn't check my Garmin 530 had a base map in North America. I think I bought it here in the UK. Anyway, no excuses. It didn't have a base map and so I started and I basically just had a blank screen with a few dots on it. Um, I freaked out on night one, booked a hotel, wasted six hours trying to fix that and then like did the rest of the 14 days um, just following those dots. So probably upgrade to a, maybe a 1040, the solar ch um, panel charging as well, that'd be good because I was charging this probably twice a day. Um, and I just wouldn't be stupid and I'd make sure it had a Garmin base map involved. Other than that, very good. Thanks for watching. Uh, I haven't looked at the GoPro footage that I retrieved yet. Hopefully there's enough. Hopefully it's good quality to make a, a bit of a video, a summary for you guys to watch. But hopefully this is interesting for the meantime. Thank you.